It is raining outside my window now. A stiff breeze is blowing in from the south, from the Sundarbans. It makes me want to read to you bits of a story that I had written some years back, which is set in the Sundarbans. The Japanese Wife was published in 2008, alongside 11 other short stories in a collection. In 2010, Oporna Shen made a film out of that story. This year is the 10th anniversary of the cinematic release of The Japanese Wife. The story is that of a young man called Snehomoy Chakraborty, who was born in the Sundarbans. He's an orphan and his aunt had taken care of him after his parents had died. The only ambition of Snehomoy is to become a school teacher once he finishes graduation from college. And so he goes to study in Kolkata to read mathematics. But he's a shy village boy. And unlike his college friends, he's unable to make friends with girls. Skimming through the pages of a magazine, he finds a name, Miyage, is that of a Japanese woman and who wants to be a pen friend to an Indian man. Snehumai writes to Miyage, and the piece that I'm going to read to you now is about his first letter and the letters that follow between Snehumai and Miyage. So here we go. The first, as he often recalled, was simple, almost bare. Yet in many ways, it was the most charming, the unexpected, his first brush with the other kind, native or foreign. Dear Snehomoy, it read, I was waiting for your letter. Yes, I shall be your pen friend. The meaning of my name is gift. It was signed, Miyake. He found it brief, but revealing. For the next few months, he wrote brief letters to his pen friend, spending more time revising his English than the calculus that came naturally. Having made the first move, discovering her address in a magazine, he felt shy, unlike his city friends, all too willing to show off. He wrote about his college, his aunt and the river. When she wrote about her own river, Nakano Kuchi, the words flowed. He told her of his anger towards Matla for flooding their village and devouring his parents, of his treacherous churns, the stink of floating carcasses. He wrote of its months of contentment following the monsoon, all swollen and calm, reflecting the bamboo groves like aging spears, of his passion of gazing at idle boats dotting the mudflats and the yearly pageantry of fishermen celebrating the gift of the river. He confided his strange excitement, lying on the banks and listening to the lapping waves as if they were the endearments of his long lost mother. She sent him a print of a marooned village, asked, How do you pronounce Snehomai? He wrote her the trick of rounding the tongue to whistle, then combining the S and the N in a soft hiss. Preparing to graduate, he wrote less frequently for a few months. When he sat down next, it was to inform her of both his decision to take up a teaching post at their village school and his aunt's keen interest in arranging a match for him with a friend's daughter. For three years in the city, he had warmed inside his cocoon, the comfort of mathematical problems and their solutions. The bi-monthly trips to see his aunt, regular visits to the post office to have his letters weighed, and waiting for the postman to deliver Miyagi's replies at the college hostel. Fellow students pulled his leg, called him the bumpkin. Someone spied on him, stole his letters, 
and announced the village boy's adventure. Dear Miyagi, I am lonely here. He read aloud from Snehomoy's unfinished letter. My aunt brought this girl over last time I went. She was shy. His friends demanded an explanation. What business did he have hiding Miyagi from them? What did Miyagi mean anyway? One of them threw him the unsolvable problem. Would he marry the village belle or the Japanese? In her next letter, she was strikingly different, almost a stranger. After the usual beginning, she changed the color of her ink and wrote in piquant blue. Now, Snehomai, I must tell you something important. I would like to offer myself to you as your wife. Please tell your aunt, I will make a good bride. If you accept, we'll be married. More than anything, he sensed a relief from the anxiety of having to take the next step, departing from his routine. In his single most courageous act, he lifted his pen and accepted Miyagi's proposal, spending the next month agonizing over the likely encounter with his aunt. She had taken it lightly at first. The pen friendship, the pen marriage, chiding Snehomai for neglecting his health till she saw in his eyes the resolve of the matla. Miyagi, what does it mean? She had asked, breaking her vow of silence. Recently married, Snehomai told his aunt about the shy beginning. The courtship, the proposal, told her everything. When will the two of you meet? It hadn't occurred to either he had confessed to discuss the prospect of a meeting. And thus the story of Snehumoy and Miyagi unfolds in the pages of The Japanese Wife. If you've already read the story or seen the film, maybe it'll bring back memories to you. And if you haven't, maybe this is the moment to pick up a copy of The Japanese Wife.